This week on Dynasty Domain, we do part two of our Dynasty Superflex mock draft. We look at rounds th- four through 12. I'm Avery Huffman. And I'm Nathan Smith. Welcome to Dynasty Domain. <laughs> So last week we looked at uh, rounds one through three for this Dynasty Superflex mock draft. Obviously, it's interesting, you know, during the uh, regular season to look at how mock drafts are shaping out because now we are in playoff mode, which means we are all going to be very depressed three weeks from now when Dynasty in fantasy is over. And we're now looking a little bit towards the offseason. And what is this going to look like after we see all of these uh, changes from how players have done, how teams have performed? Uh, what what are these startup drafts going to look like like what should we be expecting we're going to practice building a team which is what you do in mock drafts and um and also just practicing to see you know where the value is coming who which value players are falling to you and and this is going to be really important to get a good look at early so that when it comes time to start drafting these teams in the offseason you're ready and then here at dynasty domain we're trying to prepare you for that so we're going to go ahead and get started with that today so uh last week we looked at rounds one through three it was very interesting the highlights from that uh, obviously being that quarterbacks you saw a ton of them go in the first 16 picks and then after that there was a huge teardrop the two was taken at the two four and the next quarterback taken was trey lance at the three eight after that russell wilson at the four three it's going to be a very top heavy quarterback year in startup drafts b john robinson or the 101 was taken at the two two uh, so that was after the likes of the three receivers, Chase Jefferson and Lamb, after all of the quarterbacks besides Lawrence and Tua. So Bijan obviously getting a huge prize tag here early. Uh, Deshaun Watson at the 1-7. He's going pretty high. Uh, t- Jonathan Taylor went all the way at the 2-8, which was a little bit surprising. We saw somebody take Debo and DeAndre Swift in the late third, which seemed a little bit early to us at least. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, Garrett Wilson, both early third round picks. So you can see how this year's NFL season is starting to change uh, how we're going to be drafting these teams this off season. And now we get to round four. So we left off. Our last pick was T Higgins. He was the three twelve, and at the four one Papa score goes, goes ahead and takes Saquon Barkley. Don't you love this pick here? I do. It's I, awesome. I think it's a really good value at the four one. He's uh, on the older side of um, in RBs and dynasty. He's going to get a new mega deal next season. He really proved that he's worth that. Um, whether that's in New York or elsewhere um, doesn't really matter where he ends up for me. I, I, I love this. I think um, since Todd Gurley um, running backs have been valued a little bit differently than they may have been in the past where we think their lifespan is a lot shorter than maybe we thought it used to be. And while that may be valid for a lot of running backs, those elite level ones, with the exception of your Todd Gurley guys, um, are are probably going to last a little bit longer. I think Barkley has had his fair share of injury that he struggled with, and I think he is uh, poised for a nice second chapter of his career where he doesn't have to deal with that as much. Now, I we'll think we I think we would have done this startup draft uh, earlier in the season. I think Saquon would be going early to mid third. Uh, I think Saquon, yeah. if you know, if you've paid attention to his production as of late, and if you're an owner, I'm sure you have, it's dropped off just a little bit. He's, I mean, it, he's chilled out. Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, look, I, well, uh, what, what did you expect? I, we, I've been saying this this entire year. I, I will say like Simon, was so excited about the Giants saying, oh, the Giants are so good. The Giants are one of the best teams in the NFL. They're amazing. And I was like, hold up. They're probably going to end around the eight and nine, right. nine and eight range. And it's looking like that. It's getting closer. Um, to that. And <clears throat> it's because they're so limited offensively. Daniel Jones is bad. He is so bad. Fact check true. And their, their offense literally goes through Saquon. <clears throat> so what do defenses have to do when they play the Giants? Stop Saquon. That's literally all they have to do. And like same thing with Jonathan Taylor and Indy. But yeah. that's why his production has taken a little bit of a of, of a drop off. And you get he's good value a, because of it. Yeah, he's like, still, that's what I'm saying. He's still a high end RB one. Look, you're going to get Saquon Barkley in the fourth round of these drafts. You're going to take him every day. You just have to. I mean, he's just he's just a good value there. Drake London at the three o two four o two. Sorry, and you know. Honestly, it's a receiver that you're talking about could probably take his fourth round startup draft capital and move up into the first two rounds if he gets an elite QB. I think you've got to like Drake London here. Yeah, the, it looks like the sky's the limit for him right now. Um, and I, I did, I will say, I did love seeing Garrett Wilson go ahead of him. Yes. Um, but, mm. y- you know, when it comes to value, I'd say Drake London is a better value than Garrett Wilson is right now in startups. 
Okay. Uh, Russell Wilson went at the four three here, which this is interesting. Like I was surprised by this. You're really taking Russ over Cousins? Uh, like I mean, and looking in this draft, spoiler right, with, but, uh, with the contract. I, I know, but in terms of production and reliability, I think you you have to lean Cousins, right? I mean, if so, if Cousins gets paid this off season, which I think we expect that he will, like remain in Minnesota for. What I think of Rafa, He'll probably get a three year, three deal. or four year deal is what I'm thinking. If he does, you have to think that you'd prefer him over Russ at this point, right? I mean, Russ has looked fairly bad. He's not yeah. offering a ton of rough rushing upside. Yeah, I mean, he had his first good game this last week. Oh, that's that's good. I only took him. Judy had three touchdowns. It Judy, took three touchdowns ooh. from Judy for him to put we're up twenty six points. We're going to cover Jared but, Judy here in this. Yeah, um, I, I'm not willing to completely give up on Russ, not because I think he's better than he is. I think a lot of people need to admit that he is worse than we thought he was. In fact, he just might be bad. Um, but again, with with that deal, the, it, it's, it's not going to take many weeks for him to produce at a high level for him to be super valuable again because of that contract and because of the situation in Denver where, you know, at the end of the day, if you're not really confident in his long-term outlook, take that value there and then ship him off later, you know? Yeah. So, um, I, again, the quarterback, I, I would probably prefer cousins though. Yeah. The, the tier drop off is crazy. It's cr- And what's also crazy is that Russell Wilson goes in the four, three here and cousins goes at the seven one. That is wild. That is too big of a gap here. We'll, we'll talk about cousins here in a little bit. Kenneth Walker at the four, four. This is interesting because you saw, Saquon and DeAndre Swift go and even Brees Hall who among the dynasty community I would like to think that Kenneth Walker because of his situation because of his health because of the flash he's shown in his rookie year would be more valuable not better but at least more valuable than those guys and to see Kenneth Walker slide to the 4-4 I mean when you're talking about great value uh, Alele's team here you're talking about Burrow Tyreek Cup and Walker like he got I mean that's like that's a lot of that's a lot of yeah. firepower and then you get it's a value nice. pick Real and nice. look, long term, I'm not sure I'm the highest on Kenneth Walker, but again, you take the value, it falls to you, and that's a good one there. Alave at the four five. I love Chris Alave. How is I don't understand. Is is Chris Alave really going to go in the fourth round? This I mean, because if he is, I'm taking him there every single time. Every single time. I mean, you're talking about. I, no, I I think he could. Yeah, I mean, and don't you th- do you think he should go higher than this, or you think it's appropriate? I I think it's appropriate. Not not because um I think he can't be valued higher but i mean look at the receivers that are going ahead of him you have london you have wilson you have dk you have amon ra and then you've got those old guys sort of sitting in the at the end of the third round that are a bit iffy that could drop and alave could jump them it's hard it's hard for for me not to take alave over debo and it's hard for me not to take him over Devontae adams in terms of upside and promise though the the saints are just too solid of a team for them to get a really high draft pick where they can get an elite quarterback next year. They're kind of stuck. They're they're kind of in that third year situation that the Colts have been in for the last five years where they've lost their franchise quarterback and they're probably going to be mediocre for a while. And that could affect Alave's fantasy ceiling for the foreseeable future. Um, however, I don't think that discounts his talent or his ability. He's incredible. He's incredible. Uh, Austin Eckler at the four, six, you get the running back one, a guy who has limited touches, a guy who's going to be tied to Justin Herbert and an elite offense for a couple more years at the four, six. I mean, you were smashing this. If I'm contending, I'm taking him over yeah. nearly anyone. Yeah. I mean, Eckler was going mid to late second round just last year. I mean, and I he's already dropped that much and, I don't, and, and he's the RB one. I mean, he has not slowed down one bit. No. Okay, good value there. I like Eckler here. They, so you're talking about a couple guys that you're going to smash in the fourth round. You got so far Eckler, you're smashing in the fourth round. Alave, you're going to smash in the fourth round. Kenneth Walker, you're going to smash in the fourth round. Look, it, I mean, just looking at it here, this fourth and fifth round, and as we get into this, this is where you find some of these gold mines. Where last year, I think it was kind of hard to look into this middle range of the draft and try to predict, okay, this guy's got a real good chance to jump up. This guy's going to be second or third round. I see a lot of those guys here. I see London. I see France. No, I'm just kidding. I see Olave. <laughs> I see ETN potentially. That was, I just came out. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. E- I see TJ Hawkinson still going at the 412. Traylon Burks in the fifth, as we'll get to. I mean, there are just a lot of guys. Christian Watson. Jamison Williams, mainly these young receivers. I see a Javante Williams even as, as a running back who is only 22. There are some gold mines. And if you're contending, you've got Christian McCaffrey here in the fourth round. Austin Eckler 
in the fourth round. I guys like Josh Jacobs in the fifth. Yeah, Josh Jacobs. Joe guys, Mixon in the sixth. Josh Jacobs is twenty four years old. He is he is like a couple months older, or I, I'm sure you'll correct me with the with the graphic, but he is not much older than Najee Harris at all. No, within a year, I think. So nope. yeah, I mean, you, it's just it's just the difference in draft classes, obviously. But but Josh Jacobs has kicked butt this year, and you're getting. We'll get to him. Anyways, Austin Eckler, crazy value there. ETN, a guy that would probably have been going higher earlier in the season now is jumping down. There's not a ton to dislike about ETN besides the fact that he's been pretty slow as of late, which again, I, I don't know how you can blame him though. I, he, he hasn't, I don't really think he's been that slow. I think his usage is to just again, been down. You're getting him and him and Saquon are guys. You can wait, you can take value wide receivers in the first couple rounds and you can get elite younger running backs because people are taking these late season slides and they're like, okay, Maybe they're not as good as we thought they are. I, you, you're going to have so much. This is going to be a key to going in and doing startups. You're going to need to go in and look at at late season bias and which which players are people shorting because they didn't perform super well late in the season. And I think there's quite a few of those on this list. And those ETN are, will be one of those. And those are going to be the guys that you're going to want to smash potentially. And I like ETN too as well. Uh, tied to Trevor Lawrence, great. Doug Peterson, eh. Not the best, but at the same time, you're, as you're seeing his usage go up, everybody, I mean, if you go back, flashback, what, 12 weeks ago, everybody said James Robinson had taken his job. So, shows what we know, yeah, that right? Was, uh, McCaffrey at the 4-8. Look, it's Christian McCaffrey. He's playing on the 49ers. Yeah, he just went off yesterday, too, with Brock Birdie. Again, value guy. And, and I don't even know why he's going at the 4-8, but holy smokes. I, why are you taking, I, why did Swift go before Christian McCaffrey here? Where, where was CMC going last year? Again, mid-second? Uh, late second. Yeah. Why are, why are these guys going? So why are they going a full two rounds later? Now? And it's not. I mean, it's not like Chris McCaffrey's going in the mid late third and more like, oh, he's. I mean, this is the at this point, this is the late fourth. Like, this is great value here. Uh, all right, and then we get into uh some more pickers. More picks. That's so, that's the one hundred and four. And then this. So this is actually I made this pick and I picked Jameer Gibbs here. So you know, with Gibbs. I heard a funny, I actually, our uh, JCJ Dynasty, which is uh, our director of content here at Dynasty Domain, sent me a video the other day, and this guy was saying, you know, people people say that they, they think these guys are going to come in and take over backfields, and with Gibbs, he's like, he said, I would be happy if Gibbs was James Cook, word for word. I'm sorry, who said that? I don't remember his name. Some chill oh, or something. Oh, my gosh. It, we, I, we've seen him before. But. How is that worth an early first round pick? Yeah, exactly. So, so I would, uh, I would I'm love higher, to see someone go I'm trade higher James Cook on, for I'm higher on Gibbs than this. If you look at his receiving splits at Alabama, I, I just, I'm, I've said it on the show. I love PPR backs. They're like my favorite type of player. Gibbs <sighs> is going to go somewhere and be a solid PPR back. So for me to get, you know, starting with my quarterbacks, Jackson and Tua, and then get a receiver in St. Brown and then be able to get a running back here in Jameer Gibbs that I think is going to be really good in the NFL. I love that value. Devonta Smith, a guy that we told you he would jump up, and he did, and I think he should be higher than this, but Devonta Smith at the 410, obviously he's on the best offense in the NFL right now. Not much to say. Yeah, I, I get where he's going, though. I, his ceiling could be capped. Because of it, it, AJ, I mean, AJ Brown. It could be. I, it is, it is definitely AJ Brown and Devonta Smith are two of, I would say, the two of the best receivers in the NFL playing on the same team, and because of that, in terms of fantasy, they are going to be your classic receivers in fantasy sure. where they have some amazing weeks and they have some pretty underwhelming weeks. He's the wide receiver 19 on the year. So obviously, yeah. you know, a fairly solid season. He's going to, I think he's going to end up outperforming his uh, numbers from last year, even with AJ Brown on the team, which if only there were some pod, some people who that told, told you, you that would happen, that we tried to tell you Devonta Smith is a dog. I mean, he's he's probably like the dynasty domain golden child at this point. Yeah. Uh, the 105 went next. I'm assuming the 105 here was Jordan Addison. I can't remember. No, it was uh, JSN. I oh, okay. I took Addison. That's right. Jackson. So so Jas Z da, Jackson uh -huh. Smith uh -huh. in Jigba. Holy smokes. That's a mouthful. Uh, obviously, you know, JCJ is our rookie guy. He's taken three of them so far. Hawkinson at the 412. Look, we got some pushback saying that Hawkinson would fall in this four or five round range. I think this is exactly where you're going to see Hawk fall. I think it's where he's he should be going. And this year, I'm not I'm probably not taking him any higher than where he's going here. 
uh, in the late fourth. So I would I would probably take him in the fifth. I think I I had the opportunity, but like if I'm taking the 104, Hawkins said I'm taking the 104 at this point. Even the 105 and 106, I'd probably take, and then that's when I would be grabbing Hawkins and over probably the 107. So yeah, fourth yeah. round. Fifth round. Good value in the yeah. fifth round. Good. There's some good value here. Najee Harris went at the 5-1. Um, a lot lower than when he was going at the end of the first and the turn last year. What a fall from grace. So here's what we've learned this offseason. If you are taking a... I mean, unless they're a sure thing, which I do think Jonathan Taylor is a sure thing. Now, Swift and Najee last year, I don't think they were a sure thing. So you're taking yeah. those guys as your first pick in a dynasty super flex. That means two quarterback you are toast if you took Najee in the first round last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Swift, look, we we missed on Swift. We missed on Swift big. He's not as valuable as we thought that he could be. We do still think that he has that ceiling that we expected him to have this past season. Yeah. Um, Najee is something that we, we suspected. We 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 were suspicious of his value the entire time. We we didn't. I uh, we would be lying to you if we told you that we thought he would be as disappointing as he has been I this season. I think so. We didn't expect that. We still had him as a top five dynasty running back, but we did say he could be pretty overrated because of his efficiency and it, the fact that he was a high end RB one solely because of the volume that he was getting in Pittsburgh with the statue of uh, of Ben Roethlisberger playing there last year. Um, so Najee at the start of the fifth round. Still don't hate it. Still don't because there's there is a solid chance that he can bounce back from this. There is a, I would I still argue maybe an outside chance that he could end up producing as a decent RB one again for the rest of his career. Um, however, th- this is but he, super disappointing. He, I, I, in fact, big, I think the the big biggest turn off for us. me with Najee is that he's Trent Richardson. Um, I'll say that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's not. He's he's not Brent Richardson. I yeah. the correction that was actually Quentin Johnson that went at the. Yes, I I just looked that up then, too. I and then so that. after Hawkinson, uh, w- the 106 was taken here, and that was JSN. So Quentin yeah. Johnson, you have two elite college prospects in terms of wide receivers going to our prospect guru. There, not surprising at all. Josh Jacobs went to five three to reckless again. That's a great value. You're getting a top yeah. five running back this year. In the a top fifth. five running back now, with he's 24, 24 years old now. Carries are the one. The carries are the things that we want to look at for for these running backs and he is about two-thirds of the way through his uh life in in terms of the carries that he has he's uh, just around a thousand eleven hundred yep. uh stuff like that but i i think that's completely fine i mean derrick yeah, henry absolutely. derrick henry was going earlier than that going into this season and, and he has well over 1500 touches of course he's he's kind of a unicorn but um, in terms of Josh Jacobs' usage, I'm not really that concerned for the next couple of years. Yeah. Uh, Traylon Burks went at the 5-4. I made the pick. I obviously love the value. I think Burks is a guy who got shorted because he has he asthma. He will continue to be a buy. But he's going to continue to be a buy. Chris Godwin will always, 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 always be a buy Forever. in fantasy. Forever. Yep. At the 5-5, five, five, he's 26 years old, but probably about to turn 27 at this point. But continuing to completely just produce at every level, no matter which quarterback it is. So do not worry about Tom Brady going away because he probably will because he sucks and because he's old. Chris Godwin, he's going to produce with any quarterback you give him. And Mike Evans probably is at the point where he's not going to. I think Mike Evans is going to see, even though Mike Evans has been one of the most consistent wide receivers in terms of fantasy production, in the last eight years, I do think that at, at this point we're gonna if if they get another quarterback in there, Chris Godwin's gonna be the alpha. I mean, it uh, you cannot go wrong picking Chris Godwin anywhere almost. I mean, it nope. is it is no, amazing where you can get him. Uh, and then Nathan went ahead and took our next pick here, uh, and this is Jordan Addison at the one oh seven. So Jordan Addison at, out of USC, obviously a great route runner. Uh, I think a lot of people have him mocked to go in the top ten, top. 15 picks pretty easily and you're going to see I think teams looking to get those elite receivers on rookie contracts you've already seen it with Johnson already being drafted here JSN already being drafted here again the dynasty community is catching on that NFL teams are really going to want those rookie contracts and want those rookie wide receivers in the NFL they're going to come in and we've seen it this year Alave you've got London you got Garrett Wilson even Jameson Williams flashed last week you all these rookies these rookies can come in and they can produce at least some right away, but you have these rookies. I mean, you have Olave flashing at 22 and being the wide receiver 20 in PPR leagues. I am drooling at the mouth to grab him anywhere I can. 
now we're just looking at this and we're drafting these young receivers. I think we're looking at the stability of the wide receiver position more and then saying, okay, even though, you know, rookie running backs are the way to go, grab them while they're young. The wide receiver position is a premium in, in dynasty and these young ones are fantastic to grab. So good pick. That was your pick. Yeah. Thanks. The next tight end went off the board here. Uh, Dallas Goddard, a guy who we did not think could continue the production that he had last year. And he absolutely has, obviously he's hurt, but a guy that, I think you could take him here fairly easily. Like, I mean, I think if you don't want to swing on a Kelsey or an Andrews or even a Hawkinson, then, then Goddard's going to be a guy you can get. That's a great value. Although we'll get to some more value here later in tight ends. Christian Watson at the five, eight. Let's talk about this one too high for Watson or just right. I mean, I, I mean, think again, about it. Uh, if this we, wouldn't have happened, if this stretch would not have happened, Christian Watson would probably be, be drafted in the 8th to 10th round for sure. Yes, but again, we, we got to think about this in terms of startups, not how we value them, but how what is the market value for Christian Watson right now? And right now, it's it's going to be 5th round. It, it is. I, I don't think you... Let's keep trade, got it. I, I wouldn't say you shouldn't take Christian Watson there. I would prefer Marquise Brown. Oh, yeah. I would prefer... Oh, I don't. Think, I don't Burks. think it's a bad pick uh, at all. I'm just saying. Like, no, uh, are we but, overvaluing but I, him as a community? Uh, it's, he, he it's, the, it's, whoa. Uh, it's such a tough sample size. It's, it's so tough. Is he a wide receiver one now? He is a wide receiver fifteen on Keep Trade Cut. Yeah, and and I I believe it. I understand it because he has been so much fun to watch. So productive these la- this last month with multiple touchdowns, pretty much every game. Um, and he's kind of the only receiving threat with the exception of Lizard there in, in Green Bay. But I don't know how you can't be a little bit uneasy about his future outlook with the questions surrounding Aaron Rodgers, the questions surrounding who the heck is Jordan Love, what is he going to be, and just the the whole situation in Green Bay is, is honestly kind of terrifying for me. Dude, you can... Like, the, this to me is is... The, the one thing that Gabe Davis had going for him last season was that if he ended up playing at a super high level, like high-end wide receiver two level, like, like some people thought he could, Simon, um, <laughs> you, you were like, it, it, it was because of Josh Allen. Right. And he still has a chance to produce at a high level because he's with Josh Allen. Who is Christian Watson going to be with? Who will he be tied to for the rest of his career? This is one of those guys where I could see him being just an absolutely amazing wide receiver with so much talent, so much ability. And then in terms of fantasy, there's only so much he can do in fantasy for you. These are, these are, I'm, I'm talking about the Terry's and I, it, I, I don't I, I kind of want to look beyond the fact that he scored so many touchdowns and his touchdown rate is literally 50 percent right now. Everyone knows, even the people that are really high on Christian Watson know that that is not sustainable and that's not going to last. Correct. The problem is what steps are he is he going to be able to take from now to next season where where he can still produce at a high fantasy level? I, I think we could see a bit of a step down. We could. But I also it. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if he's producing a, a, at a decently high level. Again, I don't have a problem with him going at the five eight. I don't. He, I, he, I really don't. I keep, he's he's a. I I am more worried about his dynasty outlook than I am with a guy like Godwin, Marquise, Devontae Smith, and and heck even even Traylon Burks. He is higher than Cooper Cup on tre- keep trade cut. What the heck? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, go check it out. Wow. Yeah, I think I, I do think he's entering sale territory. I like Christian Watson, and, and I, we stayed the course when Romeo Dubs got all the hype. But, wow. Marquise Brown at the 5'9". I, again, I think I'd take Marquise over, over Christian Watson. Yeah, I, 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 again, would, it's not... I I, we like Christian Watson, too, so it's not against Christian Watson, but no. Marquise, the, the, target the, hog. Major target hog, and the reason he's still valued so low is because DeAndre Hopkins is still there. Uh, yeah. He's not going to be there forever. And the way the... Uh, Cardinals are looking this season, looking like they're probably going to have easily a top 10 rookie pick next year. They may even have a top five chance because what are they three and eight right now going into tonight? Yeah, so I think they're uh, they're four and eight right now. I, I don't if they really... win tonight. So right now they have the sixth pick. And if they win tonight, then the Colts move into the sixth pick. Nice. They the Cardinals have 
uh, they they could save a lot of money if they let DeAndre Hopkins go and just ride with Marquise Brown and sign him to a big year deal or, or to oh, a to a big deal. I'm Nathan, I hate DeAndre Hopkins. But no, like I no, I don't hate him, but it just doesn't make sense for a team that's struggling as much as the Cardinals are to keep a, no, a, a receiver. He, he, like, like he should D-Hopkins. go to Kansas City. So we should call it. He he should. That would be awesome. Yeah. Oh my gosh, uh, Javante at the five ten. Very good. Well done. This guy was going at the one two turn last year. The one two turn. I mean, there's so much upside here. And you're taking such so, such little risk taking him at the end of the fifth round here. Look, Melvin Gordon's gone. What did we say? The boogeyman would leave, the boogeyman's not there anymore. Latavius Murray is not gonna give I mean when Javante comes back, it's his backfield. I know he's got I know he got hurt, but there's a lot of upside there. Pittman at the five eleven. This is where I think Pittman should go in Dynasty drafts. Yeah, he he's going probably a round and a half later than he did last season and this is good montgomery at the 512 definitely seems early to me you took david montgomery <laughs> over joe mixon and nick chubb even ramondre like in dalvin cook like i think i'd take all those guys over david montgomery yeah, at this heck point. I, i'm even looking at <laughs> and i'm so anti terry but i'm probably taking i'm taking terry over montgomery and terry went right after him I, i'm taking um, so but, here, i mean the guys in the sixth round here you can go ahead and put the sixth round up on the screen but mclaurin Jameson Williams, Mixon, Chubb, Stevenson, Ayuk. Next rookie pick. DJ Moore, Pickens. I'm taking all I'm these taking, guys. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah. I, I think David Montgomery should have gone like two or three rounds after this. <laughs> don't you and think? Yeah, yes. No, I, I agree with you. And the, the big thing with Montgomery is, yeah, he's he's pretty young. Yeah, he has a chance to he, go to but, a different team and get a good deal. But he the only reason he's producing at the level that he is right now is because Herbert got injured and he's just getting so much volume. He's not really being look, he's not really efficient with that. He's, volume at he's all. an aging running back coming off of an expiring rookie contract that has very little flash, very little elite ceiling compared to some other guys. He hasn't done anything this season to prove that he should be signed to I mean, a why? deal where a team commits to him as the maybe this was an auto one. pick. I don't, I don't know. It could be. I, I did not like it though. All right, oh, but, he's a Bears fan. It's Papa score. He's a Bears fan. It doesn't really matter. I, yeah, it's the bias. The I mean, Bears I mean, bias. I'm a Colts fan, but you didn't see me taking a lot of Michael Pittman. Last year. <laughs> I have one share of him because I'm like, he's going too high. Uh, <laughs> I did take John Taylor though. Look how that worked out. Terry McLaurin yeah. at the six one. Um, yeah, I mean, I would definitely take Judy and Pickens and Jamison Williams yep, and Amari he, Cooper and DeAndre Hopkins over him. But yeah, he has exceeded expectations this he's year. He's done though. fine. He's done a good, great job. I mean, and he's got a long-term elite quarterback with. <laughs> I can't even say it. Never mind. He, I mean, he doesn't really have a great <laughs> quarterback situation. Um, the math whiz. Yeah, I know. Uh, Jamison Williams. Yeah. Good I mean, stuff. Again, good stuff. A, I, a guy that you know we haven't even seen him play. But he's got one pass yeah. and he scored a tud. I mean, guys, he is the last of these high end rookie receivers from the twenty twenty two class that are going. Uh, uh, no, second last because of Pickens. Yep. But Ooh, I, I mean, the guys going ahead of him are, are are Burks, Watson. Uh, uh, his draft capital is higher than both of those, and it's it's just because he hasn't played. We don't expect receivers to produce. No. Uh, where you're starting I wouldn't them every ex- I don't expect week. him to do anything this year. Yeah, I know. And I'd still take him and, in the fifth round. And, and, yeah. Guys, okay, good pick. He's he's the real deal. Joe Mixon, excellent pick. And this guy has a... I think he, that's Jamar Chase is his profile picture. But Joe Mixon in the sixth, are you kidding me? Nick Chubb in the sixth, are you kidding me? Ramondre Stevenson in the sixth? Yeah, it's probably about where it should go. Actually. I, I'm kind of seeing a trend here. A lot of these running backs, with the exception of you know Ramondre, a lot of these running backs on the tail end of their career have dropped almost consistently two full rounds. Yeah, it's all. I mean, like you're talking. I'm loving getting these guys. CMC. Now I can get I can get cornerstone receivers and quarterbacks and then I can just pick off the elite running backs because people are letting them slide again. There's going to be advantages to everybody like not wanting to draft running that dreaded 27 is nearing. Oh, and I again, I think the dynasty domain prediction is that (sighs) maybe 27 isn't that Running backs have a longer shelf life than people think. People are scared because of, again, it's the Todd Gurley complex. People are scared because they've seen it happen, you know, a, a number of times, admittedly, in the last six years. However, I think there are a lot yeah. of these guys that are going to continue to produce and continue to produce for a, at least a little bit longer. Yeah, well, well, it's interesting, too, because over the last six years, uh, maybe even a case for the reason that running backs seem to be looking like they're falling off around 27 years old is because we've entered into this pass-happy style of football as well where 
these running backs on the the less elite passing offenses are they're using them a lot more and then once they get one of those elite running backs they're they're less needed i i, I guess but yep. i with those guys that have the receiving upside like mixon like chubb like eckler like saquon they're invaluable yeah, to absolutely. those types of teams. So Ayuk at the six six. Look with the with the downfall of Debo, Ayuk looks like the wide receiver one there. Good pick. I mean, that's a pretty good value there. I think for Ayuk. Um, I don't think I'd take him a lot higher than this though. And, no, I, I'm still reluctant. Yeah. Uh, and then the next rookie pick went here. Yep, that was me. Uh, I took Zach Evans. Good pick. Again, another running Thanks. back coming in. I was debating between him and Levis. I think Levis could actually jump. Levis has a chance to jump into the top three or four. Come, I need come Levis to get drafted by the Colts. That is literally what we're crossing our fingers for. Please, please, please. Chris Ballard, if you have to, if you have to trade the entire offense to go get do Will it. Levis, do it, do it, do it, just do it. Um, DJ Moore at the six eight. Look, I take I take Pickens over Moore. I take Judy over Moore. I take Hop over Moore. I take Cooper over Moore. Uh, I'm 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 done, I'm done with I'm done with the more stuff. Uh, you, I know Simon was probably higher on him than both of us were. I think you even liked him I a liked little him bit. Some you liked him some. Look, I was look, I was okay with him, and I saw okay. the upside because he was super no, talented. Before you get in our comments and but, you're like, oh, who's who have been his quarterbacks this year? Look, where I mean, where, where are we? When, four when, years and, later, and when that and when are the Panthers actually going to upgrade their quarterback situation? You could say, okay, well, if they draft Levis, even then, even then, I don't think you're going to see DJ Moore produce at a wide receiver one level, which is what we all kind of wanted him to do. Move out of that wide receiver two production level and up into wide receiver one. Yeah. There are guys with higher upside. George Pickens has wide receiver one upside. Yeah, I said it. Jerry Judy, at this point, he looks like he has some pretty freaking high upside. DeAndre, yeah. DeAndre Hopkins is a wide receiver one. Amari Cooper is a wide receiver one. Amari Cooper's, how much, I mean... How old is DJ Moore now? Like 25, 25, right? He's not old. He has a ton of, he has a ton of time left. But again, I mean, how, how long are you going to ride it out I mean, with this guy expecting him to produce at the level look, that there are guys I would, there are not, guys I would take over him, but it's not like taking him here at the end of the six is a crime or anything. No, it's not a crime. We're just, this, this is, is our this personal is more preference. just personally ranting on DJ yes. Moore. So I yeah. don't want, I, didn't want I personally am done with DJ Moore. I don't want anything. Yeah, to I'm do the with same him. way, which but it's not a bad pick by any means. I took Pickens here. Yeah, that's uh, how the turns table, how the turn tables. Michael Scott paper company. You know, I think with George Pickens, it's a combination of things. I, part of it was I just didn't like his attitude, which is just personal preference again. But that's why the Colts didn't draft him. But I think he's looked I think he's flashed enough now and I don't think he's put together again. He's a rookie. So, I mean, what am I worried about? If you see a rookie flashing like this a receiver, I'm drooling. I'm taking him Judy at the 610. Same thing. He's starting to step into his own now. I think he's uh He's obviously a much better red zone threat than Cortland Sutton is. And I, while Cortland Sutton is still out targeting him by a fair amount, uh, I do think that Jerry Judy's starting to kind of maybe work his way into being a very good young wide Yeah, receiver. it would just be nice to see him stay healthy for an entire season. We'll see if we can do that next year. Yeah, next year is going to be a big season for Judy, I think. All Contract right. year. And then, right? No, this, yeah, this is, this was his third year. Was this his third year? Yeah. That's the other thing. That's the other thing that scares me is once is these rookie right wide receivers that get to the end of their deals and then start flashing. It's like, well, I, I don't have a problem with that. How much they I, I mean, that, that's what happened. That's what happened with some of the best receivers in the league with with Diggs and Devonte Adams. I, I mean, Diggly. yeah, you know. So all right, and then the end of the sixth year, Stafford and Carr. So you had two quarterbacks again. I take Cousins over both of these dudes, but you know, it's their quarterbacks. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm Stafford, surprised Stafford. I think Stafford went getting ahead of getting Cousins. getting Stafford at the end of the six is uh, is awesome. Getting Carr at the end of the six is awesome. And they're still solid. And then Cousins at the seven one is awesome. But we're not gonna. We'll put the rest of it up here in a second. Um, again, now, now we go into a little bit of a, a, a an, an old guy stretch here. Yeah. So it's let's kind of fun. let's just on the video. Let's just go ahead and put up the whole rest of the mock draft. Let's go through these final rounds. Just skip through uh, and wrap this up, and then let's pick anything we want to talk about specifically uh, to to point out. Uh, D Hop at seven three is a great value. It, it, you have a bunch of old guys here: Hopkins and Cook and Cooper. And Derrick Henry uh, all went here in the seventh, seventh round. You're getting a ton of good production for a very cheap price. Even J.K. Dobbins getting some young production for a cheap price. Yeah, and he is risky. Uh, I am less high on J.K. Dobbins than I was because I have expected him to do more this year. But he flashed yesterday. So maybe, I don't know. 
Yeah, he, he the, the one thing don't don't listen to a person if they tell you that J.K. Dobbins is injury prone and he's never going to be what he could be because of his injury. Because if you look at why he was out this season with that injury, he literally had a cleanup surgery for the horrible ACL tear that he had last year. Yeah, where I, he like partially, which again, partially I'm, worried, I'm hamstring. worried about that, hamstring. but because he's getting old. But <laughs> we'll see with Dobbins. What, what was your favorite pick in that round? Um, for me, it was hands down Amari Cooper. I'm taking Amari Cooper over DJ. Moore. So your your pick was your favorite pick, because I, I was going to say mine. Oh, I didn't even know I picked Amari. That's funny. I liked getting Dalvin Cook. In I the liked seventh round. No, Dalvin was a good one. I think I think my favorite picks here are Hopkins, Cook, Cooper, and Henry. I yeah. like I like the old guys here. A Gino at the eight one. Wow, wow. That's all. That's all. I think that's all we have to say. Getting Dotson at the eight three is pretty nice. Getting a young receiver there. Mike Williams mm, yeah. is there. That's a very good pick. Christian Kirk in the in the late eighth round. Well done. That is a guy who has come out. He is a wide receiver one. He is on a huge contract. He's tied to a great quarterback, and you're getting him in the eight, at the end of the eighth. Holy smokes! I mean, this is a smash. It's nice. I'd take him. I mean, I would take him as high as the six. This is crazy. This is great value. Kittle in at the end of the eighth. To me, that was a smash. The other two rookie picks went here. We won't cover the rest of these, but uh, just for reference, the next rookie picks were. Uh, Levis, uh, and then Richardson went after that, and then Mayer after that, and then Sean Tucker was the one twelve. So those were nice. the final. We'll do it. We're nice. going to do a whole video on the rookie pick. So check back in, and we're going to put all of this. Yeah, in we're going to we're going to do a lot of rookie analysis this Featuring offseason. Featuring Jay, uh, James Cook at the eight twelve. It's about right, I think. I mean, I don't. Him and Rashad White and Damian Pierce and AJ Dillon all went back to back here. Yeah, probably. But check out what the nine eight is pretty rich. Gabe Davis. At the, wait, why is <laughs> Gabe is Davis rich. going in the same spot he did last year? That's maybe, that's, maybe because that's where he belongs. Oh, shoot. Okay. Um, Sky Moore at the nine ten. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of sexy. Sky Moore could this. be a, could be a buy. This Aaron Jones at the ten six. That's crazy. That's crazy. Kamara. At, I mean, Kamara at the eleven seven makes some sense because he could get suspended. Man. But James Conner at the ten. I mean, you get some really good running backs here. Not to mention Mike Evans here in the tenth. You're going to yeah. get some great production value. Yeah, and look, I these mean, guys are not all going to produce at the level they did this year. There's going to be some drop off of some of the old guys. There will be some drop off, but I mean, when you're looking at Dalvin Cook, who's the running back ten on the year, versus Aaron Jones, who's a running back eleven right now. Yeah. Uh, why are they going three rounds? Why apart? are they going three rounds apart? I, I really like that. Kadarius Tony's still going in the tenth. I'm not touching Tony with a ten foot pole. Alec Pierce in the eleventh. That's a great young value there. Cortland Sutton in the eleventh. That's pretty funny, actually. Not going to lie. Uh, Romeo Dubs, Chase Claypool <laughs> in the twelfth. Greg Dulcich in the twelfth. Good pick, Nathan. I love that. I thank did you, take. Thank you. I took. I did take Antonio Gibson here uh, in the late twelfth. I thought. Yeah, that, that's that's fine. And Tyler Lockett is a great. Good. Pick. Wow. Good, good I have, stuff. He's like my most rostered player. I think at this point. It's yeah. Just like, oh, you want to score points and cost nothing? Yeah. Okay. Um, Gallup and Peoples Jones is a solid pick. He's doing really well with Deshaun so far. Um, I'm not sure why Brady was taken. Yeah, that's um, weird. That's he was probably going to retire. Don't you think? Um, John Mechie. Yeah, he. I would take ne- Nico Collins went after him. I'd take Nico Collins before Mechie. Oh, I'd take Mechie over Nico Collins. No problem. Really? Yeah, yeah. I I mean you have to assume that. If everything goes as planned, which we've seen it does not because we expect Malik Willis to go top five last year in the NFL draft, assuming Bryce Young goes 101 overall, he's going to Houston. Then you have Bryce Young reunited with John Mechie. I, I think it's a really cool pairing, and I think Mechie's a really talented receiver that could have been overlooked in Alabama as a wide receiver prospect just because of the talent around him. Um, he he's capable of producing at a high level with literally no other threats there in the passing game. I mean, Nico Collins is a fine receiver. I don't think he has the upside that Mechie does. I think Mechie comes with a lot of risk, so that's why I don't like him. But because of because he sat out a year. I mean, and so he, did James, and he's obviously got J- James was essentially yeah. Sat but out I mean, having Luke is a little bit different than having a sports injury. Yeah, but I mean, James Conner had cancer, and look where he's at now. I know. I mean, and but I mean, you got to admit, I mean, that probably significantly impacted the trajectory of James Conner's career. I think it did. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think I think his ceiling would have been a lot higher otherwise. It, maybe I, I mean, his I, I think I think Nico is, the, is Nick, Nico's less than a year older. And I think he's a less risky pick, so that's why I just tend to gravitate towards. Okay, him. But they went okay. back to back, so it's I, not like they're. I think they're both fine values there, just because they're they're the only receipt. Brandon Cooks isn't going to be there forever. Brandon no, Cooks is I, sick of being in Houston. It's Nico and it's Mechie. Uh, they both have as good of a chance as the other as being the the alpha receiver there in Houston. And if they get a solid high this end is, talented uh, key. QB this in, is funny. in Houston. It's, it's nice. On a so. Renfro went there. Taekwon Thornton, which is a weird pick, I think. Heck? Curtis Samuel. You got Curtis Samuel at the end of the 13th. That's crazy yeah, good value. Why, why are you taking he... Renfro and Thornton over Curtis Samuel? Yeah, that's... And Chark. And honestly, <sighs> even the the Texans receivers, I'd take Samuel a little bit earlier than this for sure. Yeah. I don't understand how Chase Claypool and Romeo Dubs and Elijah Moore went above Tyler Lockett. No. Interesting stuff. So... Uh, there you have it. That's all we did. We did 13 rounds here. I did take, I, I guess I better speak to my cam makers pick. Uh, that was literally me driving and having to pick the last time. Kind of like when I took Waddle. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, I just had to pick somebody and you know, with acres in the 13th, there's essentially no risk. So I'm not really worried about it anyways. Uh, yeah, that wraps up the, uh, first of many dynasty mock drafts we'll do, uh, during this coming off season. Uh, let us know what the biggest surprises were to you. Um, obviously, everything has changed and we're going to have a lot of coverage on how you should be approaching these startup drafts, uh, things like that. As we get closer to the off season, we get closer to startup draft season. Uh, but very interesting to say the least. So if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we really appreciate your support there. And if you're listening on Spotify, make sure you follow the show. Uh, any of our other platforms, make sure you like and follow the show as well. We really appreciate you listening um, we'll probably take a week off from the podcast this week. We'll come back next week or the week after, uh, rather as we come into the last week of the playoffs that week, it's going to get real hairy here in fantasy. So we hope you win a ton of money and a ton of leagues. Thanks for joining us, everybody. This has been dynasty domain. Mm-hmm.